Okay, guys, we're back. Um, this is some, um, we're going to do some practice with the and, or, and inverter logic gates. Um, so, real quick, just to refresh or review what are the AOI gates, I'm going to bring in this guy right here. And basically, you can see here the AND gate, the A is a 74LS08, that's the chip that you use. If we look at our X and Y inputs, remember mom and dad have to agree in order for this to say yes. So basically Z is equal to X, Y or X times Y, X and Y. Um, there's three different ways to do that. Generally speaking, we'll be using this way right here. Okay. Um, also, this is the truth table. So X, Y and then our output of Z. And we fill it in. This actually counts in binary 00011011. If you had three, then you would be going in, in threes. And you can see basically it's every other, and then every two, and then every three. Um, and that's basically how it would work there. Okay, so that's the AND gate. The OR gate is a, a similar design. It looks a little different. The 74LS32 is the chip. And it's basically the opposite of the AND gate. So mom or dad have to say yes for this to work. So OR is a plus sign, which we saw in the last video. So Z is equal to X or Y, so the OR sign is there. So we have, uh, if one of them agree, then we're good. If one of them agrees, we're good. And if they both do, then obviously we're good. And then the inverter looks like this, triangle with a little circle, and 74LS04, and it's basically the output is opposite whatever your input is. And the symbol for something that is a zero is a knot, and you put a little line over the top. You'd also maybe see sometimes an apostrophe or... Uh, a, I think a backslash, but for our purposes in this class, we'll use the over bar, and that should work just fine for us. Okay, um, so basically that's our combinational logic. We're going to look at this problem here. Um, so this is a review of the design operation of a combinational logic circuit using AOI logic. We're going to use and ors and inverters. This design controls the safety buzzer in a car and was designed to the following specifications. So we have our constraints here. The buzzer is on whenever the door is open or the key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled. Okay, so the buzzer turns on. Buzzer is our output. So if we move this over, we have uh, for our output, we have the buzzer. which is F. Um, if we look at that screen again, we had uh, the door. We also had a key in the ignition um, and a seat belt. Okay, so we've got those three. So F is our output or a buzzer. Um, and then basically we have a door a key and a seat belt and there's some conditions that have to happen in order for this buzzer to work. So basically our truth table we have it set up a little differently because we have three inputs now. We have a seat belt. Alright, we have a key. And we have a door. And we could easily say this is X um, Y and Z and then our output uh, I like to call it the function 1 and X, Y, Z these are our inputs and this is our output okay so inputs X, Y, Z are seat belt, key and door okay now we don't necessarily know what our output's going to be yet so we're going to leave that blank but we do know that no matter what we always have the same groups of combinations going on here so we always have everything not a green so zero 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 and then basically this goes zero one zero one zero one so we're going to learn how to count binary later but for now you can set it up like this so zero one zero one zero one zero one uh... we'll go that way for now and then this guy goes zero zero one 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 zero zero one one okay and then this one is four zero so we have one two four and if you had four of them it would be eight so 
zero 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 one 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 okay so there's our table we ended here where they're all on we started where they're all off and our thing our our uh, buzzer is on whenever so the buzzer is on whenever the door is open so our function is true whenever the door is open or so or is a plus sign the key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled. So if the seat belt is not buckled, it's knotted. So we have key and seat belt not. So if we put this x, y, and z into this equation, if the door is open, so we have z is true, so z is 1, or the key in the seat belt. So key would have to be in the ignition, so key would be a 1, so a Y. And the seat belt would have to be not plugged in. So seat belt would have to be 0. Seat belt is X. Let me fix that a little bit. So if X is 0, we have X not. All that equals our buzzer going off. Okay. So it's kind of a weird way to extrapolate that, but basically this is what we're looking for right here. So do I have that in there? Well, every time I have a Z as a positive, I know that that one might possibly be it. Uh, do I have a Y as a positive? Nope, Y is a zero. So I know that one's not it. What about this one? The door is open, the key is in the ignition, and the seat bell is out. So that meets my criteria right there for a buzzer so I know that my function in that row is 1. Then I go down here and, and I don't have that and then this one I do have that but look here the seat belt is plugged in so seat belt's a 1 so that wouldn't work so basically these are all zeros this is how a truth table works and okay so this is this is our equation here and this is the one that meets that um, need or requirement okay so what would this thing look like if we were to actually build it well let me uh, make some room here and remember we have this equation right here and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna build something called a bus and so let's see we have X Y and Z so I like to do we'll just set them up X Y and Z and there's my inputs and I like to do this for all of them. And we're going to use AOI to do this equation. Um, so our function will be out here somewhere. So let's start with a, a simple, we need Z. So Z doesn't do anything. Z comes off just by itself. We'll make a little node there. Z comes off and it gets ORed with this guy right here. So we're going to leave Z right there on its own for now. And I need to AND this Y and X naught. Well, Y is easy because it comes off right here and it's going to be anded with an x naught. Well this is x so we need to get this x to turn into x naught. So I'm going to pull that out I'm going to run it through an inverter so it started out as x now it's x naught. Run it through an inverter and I'm going to connect it to my y so this is y and that will give me x not y. All right? So that's y and x not. y and x not. So there's my first piece. Now I got to bring this z in. And remember these were or, so here's z. And I'm going to or these together. And that gives me z or x not y. x not y. And that comes up to my function or my buzzer. Okay, So that's what my circuit would look like in multisim. Now you can also wire this up with um, a bus with switches and you would be just fine for that. Okay, So basically it follows through um, the circuit and 
you end up with a function out here. Now when you're actually breadboarding, I'm going to show you something else here. This is an IC uh, integrated circuit component view. And so that this is one of those little black chips. And you can see inside here, this is your inverter. It literally goes into pin 1 and comes out pin 2. And then you have another inverter, another inverter. Now if you use an AND gate, you have to use this one. So I have three different chips to make this circuit right here, which is the one we just did, or similar to it. And this is the inside of the chip here. And VCC is up here, ground is down here. So the chip is powered, and then you have your little gate inside. So when you wire it up, you would literally wire one right here, one right here, and then your output would be this three right there. Okay, So that's how those work. And then if we look at our uh, deal here, you can have the buzzer. You're going to wire this up in multi-sim and actually create this guy. But anyway, that's uh, an example of AOI logic and how you put it all together. These are the switches I was talking about. Um, so instead of doing this right here, uh, this is how I would draw it in my notebook. Um, when you do it in multi-sim, you'll have actual switches to turn them on and off. Okay, so there's your example. Um, we'll work this out in class. Talk to you later. Bye.